I've been flying since 1977, and uh, I've had my own plane ever since then, and then I also flew a corporate plane here in town for five years. And so as I get older, I'm beginning to realize that, uh, you know, my memory isn't as good as it used to be, and uh, I, I want to retain my skills and, and be as good a pilot as I can be. Running around makes it hard. One thing we know from uh, a lot of research is that uh, older pilots are pretty much like the general population in, in the sense that they um, experience gradual age-related changes in mental abilities. Things like short-term memory ability, things like uh, uh, ability to divide attention across multiple tasks. Things that are required for piloting. We know that those basic mental abilities decline with age, even for pilots. Well, they're looking at older pilots and how their skills uh, possibly decrease with age and uh, being a, uh, a rather long-time pilot uh, and getting older myself, uh, I just wondered, well, gee, does that apply to me? And if so, is there something that I can do about it? Is there something I need to know? Is there something I can do to improve my flying skills? And so what I'm interested in is uh, looking to see what strategies older pilots use to help uh, perhaps compensate for some of these age-related changes in mental abilities so that they're uh, hopefully be able to fly at the same level as their younger counterparts. For the airlines, and there's a mandatory retirement, but pilots can continue to fly corporate or charter or freight uh, as long as they want to. But age is always something we worry about. I, I definitely noticed that, that uh, since I've been flying that, uh, uh, number one, I can't hear quite as well as I used to. I don't remember things quite as well. Uh, I, I make much more use of writing things down. Uh, now, whether that's because I actually would forget it, or I'm just aware of the fact that I'm getting to the age where I might forget it, uh, I'm not sure which is which. Participants in this experiment, we bring pilots in here, and they sit down in, in about a two-hour session. They have uh, six flights. They'll get a message from the air traffic controller, and the controller tells them to fly to a new heading, altitude, change their speed, change the radio communication frequency that allows them to talk to the next controller. Increase speed, maintain 130 miles, contact center on frequency. So they're really getting a lot of um, demanding communication. What differs across the six flights is the kind of aid that they're using in order to, to, to help them remember the, the air traffic control message. So they either have their usual aid, which is a knee pad, at least if they're general aviation pilots, like in this study, they're used to using a knee pad that, where they write down the information they hear as they hear it, and then they're, um, they're able to repeat back that information to the controllers. Five and one, two, zero knots. I make much more use of uh, writing things down now than I did when I was first flying. That's, a, for me, an interesting example of a, 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 an aid in the environment that uh, older pilots may potentially use more than younger pilots. The knee pad is very handy because uh, you always know where it is. With the knee pad, you know, it's a great thing and pilots are used to using it, but one potential downfall is they, they've got to put their head down to look at it. So it's possible that using that, that knee pad aid will make the task of flying the aircraft more challenging because so one of the things that using that aid requires is, is switching tasks. You know, you're doing, looking down, now you've got to look up at the instruments and that may be more, more of a challenge for older pilots. Before they do any of these flights, that we uh, put an eye tracking system on there. It's a head-mounted eye tracker and we calibrate that so that we know basically where they're looking um, throughout that whole flight. And, and that's the way that we are able to draw some conclusions about what is the impact of using this aid in terms of where the pilot is putting their attention. So we know that, that using the knee pad will require them to look down. Well, how long do they look down? And while they're not looking at the instruments, um, what's happening to their ability to fly that course? So that's why we have developed this new aid, this uh, uh, EPAD, electronic notepad. One of the ways in which it may uh, be more effective than the knee pad is the fact that it's positioned uh, close to the instrument panel of the aircraft. So the pilot can, in a sense, take notes while keeping their head up 
am either looking out for traffic or I'm looking at the uh, instruments in order to help with the flight control task. This uh, doesn't require you to put your head down and we as pilots are much better off if we're looking out the window at what's out there in front of us and the knee pad is necessarily a head down uh, item. Um, the third condition is probably the most challenging condition. They're listening to these messages and they have to rely on their memory to, uh, to repeat back and execute the instructions. I didn't have any problem at all with the touchpad um, uh, or the kneeboard, either one. Uh, I did have a problem remembering the instructions with no aids. Everybody had trouble with that. I mean, that's a demanding working memory task, and everybody had trouble. But there was a, a larger age decline in, or difference in, in that condition compared to if they were using either the knee pad or the electronic notepad. If they were using the knee pad or the electronic notepad, basically the age differences are, are uh, minimized to the point where you don't see a significant difference. It doesn't matter if you're 20 or 60 or 80. Um, if you've got really uh, complicated air traffic control information, it's likely to cause a problem for everybody. The system has become more complex, the airplanes have become more complex, and the, the uh, aids that we have to work with have been more plentiful. They're more and more coming, but they're more and more complex. Turn right heading 350, climb and maintain 3000, increase speed. We all know I can't do it from memory. Uh, I'm very familiar with the knee pad, so there's nothing new, there's nothing exciting about that. But to use the touch pad was, uh, was very interesting. It's something I've never done before. Uh, it worked very well, and uh, I can see how this can have some real advantages and, and applications for all of us older or younger pilots. Right now, they've got this uh, age retirement rule, and I, I won't get into the politics of, or, or the legalities of that. It is what it is, but I think there's a possibility that this study could show that uh, uh, pilots that aren't ready to be turned out to pasture yet. If, if they're given the tools and equipment they need to do their job, there's no reason why they can't uh, continue to, to fly. If you design tasks or cockpits or whatever it is to help older pilots, you're likely to be helping everybody. It doesn't matter what their age is. Uh, as we improve the uh, teaching aids and uh, the memory devices, uh, whatever they might happen to be, uh, I think this is going to add to uh, uh, the, the expertise that some of these older pilots may have. We know that older pilots have less working memory or short-term memory. But if they can make use of the external context, in this case the, uh, the cockpit, uh, which provides them various kinds of external um, aids, they basically can use those as external forms of memory. They may be able to get around that bottleneck of the short-term memory limitation. 47 Yankee 290 on the heading 1500 feet. I see this kind of research as being really important because um, it takes what we know is more or less inevitable about aging, which is changes in, in cognition and mental abilities, and um, talks about the positive in terms of being able to take advantage of our daily environment to compensate for that. I think it's going to benefit the population in general, because what they learn about aging pilots is going to also apply to other people in other occupations as they age. and. Uh, all going to be there someday.